So now that we know more about skeletal muscle, let's take a closer look at the other two types, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Remember how we saw that skeletal muscle cells, like the one on the top of this image, are elongated and are often called muscle fibres? Well, it's the same for smooth muscle cells. Although you can see they are nowhere near as long and they tend to be more tapered on the ends. But despite this, they are often called smooth muscle fibres as well. Under a microscope, smooth muscle cells look quite different to skeletal muscle. They have just one nucleus and you don't see the distinctive stripes or striations found in skeletal muscle. This is because smooth muscle cells have a different microscopic structure. Their myosin and actin myofilaments in the sarcoplasm are not as regularly arranged as they are in skeletal muscle. So you might see smooth muscles sometimes referred to as non-striated muscles. Another different feature of smooth muscle is that it's not under the same type of control as skeletal muscle. It doesn't have the same type of neuromuscular junction that we see in skeletal muscle. For this reason, smooth muscle is often called involuntary muscle. Smooth muscle cells contract when calcium ions in their sarcoplasm interact with proteins found there. Unlike skeletal muscle, Smooth muscle contraction is slower and more prolonged and smooth muscles don't get fatigued as easily. So remember smooth muscles make up a lot of the walls of our internal organs like our gastrointestinal tract and our gallbladder as well as making up the walls of our blood vessels like arteries. So it's a really good design feature that we don't have to actually consciously ask them to contract and that they can stay contracted for a long period of time. Cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the wall of the heart. It gives it that muscular property which allows it to pump blood all around our bodies. Unlike smooth and skeletal muscles, cardiac muscle cells aren't elongated and they're known as myocytes rather than muscle fibres. Each myocyte found in cardiac muscle has just one nucleus. These cardiac muscle cells or myocytes branch like fingers and connect with each other by special junctions called intercalated discs. These are a really important feature that ensure that muscle cells in the heart contract with a kind of a rippling effect. So this is a more three-dimensional kind of contraction when compared to smooth or skeletal muscle. And this type of contraction really suits that box type shape of the heart much better. Under a microscope, we can see that cardiac muscle cells have that similar striated appearance to skeletal muscle, which remember means that they have that regular stacking of their actin and myosin filaments. Another really interesting feature about cardiac muscle cells is that they don't need a nerve supply to contract. They're what we call autorhythmic. This is due to the presence of pacemaker cells that actually stimulate the cardiac myocytes to contract. The intercalated discs that we saw earlier connect the cells and tend to spread this action right around that muscular wall of the heart. So the nervous system can stimulate the heart rate to go up or down, but it doesn't actually make the heart beat. So you can see the three different types of muscle tissue have many features in common, but there are some major differences which reflect the different functions of each type of muscle tissue.